Hi. Hi. I'm uh, Keanu Reeves, and I'm here for Between Two Ferns. Oh. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Keanu Reeves cameos. <laughs> Inside our minds right now? Yes, Patrick. Wow! For this list, we're looking at those unexpected moments where Keanu Reeves appears on screen in relatively small but memorable roles. We're using the word cameo a bit loosely here, so parts where the one is on screen for a bit longer than generally associated with the term may be eligible. Which Keanu cameos bring you joy? Let us know in the comments. Number 10 himself, Between Two Ferns, the movie. You have a big scar here from a motorcycle accident. Yeah, I do, yeah. Is it, where is it? I mean, it just goes from here to here. Big one. God, that big. Yes, yeah, bro. I have a similar scar on my, on my leg. From what? I walked out of the movie Lake House, bumped into the, the seat in front of me. Keanu Reeves is well known for his chill manner and good-natured humor. Is it possible that his appearance on Between Two Ferns the movie pushed him to the edge? Is it frustrating uh, to have people think of you as a complete bozo, when the truth is, is that you're just a man with below average intelligence? Just do one for yes and then two for no. In this theatrical spin-off of the same named web series, host Zach Galifianakis started in immediately by questioning Reeves's intelligence. Then he followed that up by questioning his acting ability. Considering Reeves's years of on-screen fighting, we might have to worry about Galifianakis's health. Luckily, instead of getting angry, the good-natured actor managed to get in a few digs of his own. Do you research your roles? Yeah. Have you ever considered uh, researching a character that has taken acting classes? Right now I'm acting like this is fun. How am I doing? We suspect Reeves might have secretly enjoyed the ribbing. As we see during the sorta uncut extended interview posted online, Reeves could barely contain his smile when Galifianakis asked where he kept his non-existent awards. Where do you keep all of your awards? Uh, On your mantle? I don't have that many awards. At the end of your career, are you going to look back and say winning the MTV Movie Award for Best Fight made it all worth it? Yeah. Number 9. Bob. A happening of monumental proportions. Oh, my daughter's in the car waiting, so I kind of want to make this quick. Smart. What's smart? Bringing your daughter along so I don't beat the shit out of you. Judy Greer's directorial debut tells the story of an account manager's horrible day. Luckily, there's nothing terrible about Greer's collection of top-notch cameos. One of the best is Keanu Reeves playing aggressive husband Bob, whose wife cheated on him. He confronts Commons character Daniel for having an affair with his wife. Once Bob gets him alone, he hilariously demands that they compare their masculinity. It's human nature. I need to compare our height, our weight, our hair color, the way we pronounce certain multisyllabic words. By the way, could you say anti-disestablishmentarianism? Anti-disestablishmentarianism. Hmm. Interesting. It's not the first time this has been the focus of a Keanu cameo. In the short-lived comedy series Action, Jay Moore and his date sit next to the actor at a movie premiere. Moore's date takes advantage of the proximity to the star and becomes very well acquainted with little Keanu. I'm a big fan. Why, thank you. I'm getting to be a pretty big fan of yours, too. Number 8. Ortiz the Dog Boy. Freaked. Get away from me! You! You! Freak! I am Ortiz, the dog boy, leader of the freaks. Keanu Reeves is no stranger to making appearances in his friend's projects. A few years after Bill and Ted's excellent adventure, he helped out his former time-traveling companion. Alex Winter was the writer, director, and star of a movie called Freaked, and Reeves was there to lend a hand. Or should we say, paw. Hey, mind your business, sorry, sorry. The Ted Theodore Logan actor made an uncredited appearance as Ortiz the dog boy in the sci-fi comedy. He may not be recognizable through the hairy makeup, but as soon as he speaks, his voice is impossible to deny. Twelve milkmen is theoretically possible. Yeah, yeah. Thirteen is silly. Yeah. Looks like one milkman too many. 
Coogan. The performance definitely has the dude feel of Reeves' earlier characters. Although not the best reviewed film, they all look like they're having a great time in it. Don't you see, Rick? Just because we are freaks does not mean we do not know how to have some fun, huh? Number 7. Tex, Swedish Dicks. Careful, or you'll end up like me. Who could pass up the chance to play the ghost of a southern stuntman? Not Keanu Reeves. It helped that the show's creator and star, Peter Stormara, is a good friend. In this quirky web television series, Ingmar Anderson is haunted by the death of his stunt partner. It's not until the fourth episode that Tex makes a spectral appearance. Who is it? Uh, just some guy. You cheating on me. <laughs> Never. With a cheesy grin and a deep southern twang, Reeves strolls in like he owns the show. It's the kind of minor role that makes you ask, what is he doing here? Well, since Storm Mara himself has appeared in more than a few Reeves-led films, it only seems fair that he returned the favor. Are you really sure? I have to let you go. Number 6. Hank, the Neon Demon. Are you the manager? Depends who's asking. My friend says she owes you some money. Room 212? Oh, the wildcat. The best kind of cameo is when a familiar face shows up unexpectedly. In The Neon Demon, Elle Fanning is a model staying at a sketchy motel. When she fears a possible intruder, Elle's character, Jesse, goes to the manager for help. At first, he's only a voice and a dark shape. Then he swings open the door to reveal an unanticipated Keanu Reeves. What are you doing? Calling the police. Whoa, 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 whoa. Relax, okay? Hank is hostile and despicable. Reeves' portrayal of this uncaring personality grounds the strangeness of the film into a sad reality. Although his scenes are brief, it's the type of role that we don't often see him in, and Reeves definitely adds intensity to every moment he's on screen. Find you. Got it. There's your visitor. Number five, Sage. The SpongeBob movie, Sponge on the Run. Hello. <laughs> Who are you? I am a simple tumbleweed. Call me Sage. Sage. Hey, Sage. Good name. Thanks. I'm made out of Sage and I am a Sage. So it works out pretty well. As Tim Hill was writing the screenplay for this SpongeBob film, he had the perfect actor in mind for the character of Sage. For him, only one person would best portray this wise, disembodied head inside a tumbleweed. Keanu Reeves, of course. After all, he showed his philosophizing skills in his early career while talking to Socrates. All we are is dust in the wind, dude. Hill was thrilled when Reeves said yes, as he hadn't really considered anyone else for the role. It's fair to say that audiences were just as excited that Reeves agreed to roll into the film. Nailed it, SpongeBob. Sage out. Number four, Keanu. Keanu. In this comedy, Jordan Peele and Keegan-Michael Key play two cousins trying to rescue their stolen kitten. What could the adorable feline's name be? You guessed it, Keanu. Hello, I'm sorry, Keanu? Yeah, okay. I think it means cool breeze in Hawaiian. For most of the film, the kitten doesn't speak. However, during one dreamlike scene, Keanu Reeves cameos as the voice of his namesake. Hello, Clarence. It's me, Keanu. Meow. It's a hilarious throwback to The Matrix and a satisfying payoff to the joke. Clarence, it's time to wake up. Where you go from there is a choice. I leave to you. Oh, right. The Matrix. At first, his representatives reportedly weren't interested in his being in the film. Then, he was shown the trailer and enthusiastically leaped into the project. He took time from filming John Wick Chapter 2 to record his lines in a studio in Rome. Great fun was had by all, and it's hard to imagine the movie without this fun bit. Dude, all you need to remember is I get it. Number three, Batman, DC League of Super Pets. Usually when Batman's in a film, he plays a major role. However, the human superheroes don't take center stage in DC League of Super Pets. Instead, the story revolves around a ragtag group of pets with superpowers. 
Squeeze it, Bruce. That better be a licensed toy or I will freak out. After the amped up animals save the Justice League, the dog, Ace, is adopted by Batman. As a child, my family was taken from me. As a puppy, I was taken from my family. So I steal myself. My emotions always in check. No, no one, one ever getting, getting past, past my impenetrable defenses. In this film, the caped crusader's gravelly voice is provided by Keanu Reeves. Playing Batman has always been a dream of Reeves's, so this was a great way to check that off his list. Although DC seems to be aiming for a younger crew at the moment, we can still hope we might someday see Reeves take up the cape and cowl in live action and step into the light of the bat signal. I can still hear the screams as their dark wings flapped around me, scratching my chubby, childish flesh. I'm tormented every waking moment. I really think a pet would be good for you. Number two, Duke Kaboom, Toy Story 4. Each Toy Story movie brought us new toys to love. One of the highlights of the fourth film was Duke Kaboom, the charismatic Canadian stuntman. Yes. Huh? He's posing. Huh. Duke, Duke, we need Hold to- Hold on, one more. Oh yeah. While discussing this character with the production team, Reeves jumped on a table to demonstrate his ideas for Kaboom's physicality and poses. Who's the most spectacular daredevil Canada has ever seen? Duke Kaboom! Can you do the jump? Yes, I Canada! <laughs> uh -huh. In the film, he fills each moment with energy and enthusiasm to make sure that the motorcycle riding toy's passion was clear. Although Kaboom's story centers on not being able to live up to his toy's commercial hype, Reeves's cameo in this film definitely exceeds expectations. This is for you, Richard. Kaboom. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, himself, always be my maybe. Yep, oh, there he is. <laughs> Keanu Reeves is known as being one of the nicest stars in Hollywood, so it's always hilarious when he plays a negative version of himself. In the 2009 TV miniseries Bollywood Hero, a cruel, narcissistic Reeves rips Chris Kattan's ego to shreds. You're Claptar. You're playing Claptar in that new TV thing. I am. Mm-hmm. Wow. Do you believe they offered me to lead in that moronic show? I had to tell my agent just before I fired him. I don't work with children, dogs, or aliens. <laughs> His appearance in the more recent rom-com, Always Be My Maybe, further proves that he's not afraid to make fun of his own stardom. Now I know what it feels like to be completely starstruck. The only stars that matter are the ones you look at when you dream. <laughs> Thank you. Although this role probably pushes the definition of cameo, there was no way we could ignore this gem. From the moment Reeves sails on screen, he steals every scene he's in. This pretentious hipster version of himself provides one laugh after another. It's easy to see that he enjoyed the chance to exercise his comedic chops. Game over. Come on. No. Hit me. Fight him, honey. Come on. Oh. Hit me. God damn it. No. Oh. Yeah. Feeling better? Want another go? Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.